Hello friends, in the continuation of my first part of the scapula, today we are going to see the remaining part of this bone. Now in today's lecture, we basically talk about the borders and the processes of the scapula. As you know that there are three borders and the three processes. Now what are the three borders? There is a medial border of the scapula, there is a lateral border of the scapula and there is a superior border of the scapula. And you know that this lateral border is the thickest border of the scapula. Now there are three processes, one is the coracoid process, another is the acromion process and one is which is present on the dorsal surface is known as spinous process. So let us see them one by one. First is the medial border of the scapula. The medial border of the scapula is also known as the vertebral border of the scapula. Why vertebral border? Because it is facing towards the vertebral column. Now on the medial border, you are having the two part of the medial border. The border is having the costal surface and the border is having the dorsal surface. So on the costal aspect of the medial border, you are having the attachment of serratus anterior. And I already explained this attachment in my previous video. Now apart from that, the dorsal aspect is also important. On the dorsal aspect, we are having the muscles which lies deep to the trapezius. Now in the dissection, when you will cut the trapezius, the deep you will have the three muscles from above downward. These are levator scapuli, rhomboidus minor and rhomboidus major muscle. So, these three muscles are attached on the medial border but on the dorsal aspect. So here in this dissection, what you are able to understand that we have removed the trapezius and after that you can see that this is the levator scapuli, this is the rhomboidus minor and this is the rhomboidus major muscle. So levator scapuli from superior angle to the spinous process. Now this is the superior angle and below that you have a spinous process. So this is the root of a spinous process where you will have this flat triangular area. So above that you will have the attachment of levator scapuli. Against this root you are having the attachment of rhomboidus minor and below that you are having the attachment of rhomboidus major muscle. Now we will move to the lateral border. Now lateral border is facing towards the axilla and this is the thickest border. And you know that lateral border extends from the lateral angle to the inferior angle of scapula. Now on the lateral border, you are having a very important bony landmark and that is known as infraglenoid tubercle. Now this infraglenoid tubercle is present here below the glenoid cavity. So when you will trace this lateral border and when you will reach on the lateral angle, on this point you are able to feel a projection and this projection is known as infra means below, below the glenoid cavity and from this infra glenoid you are having the origin of this long head and this is known as long head of triceps muscle. Now triceps is a muscle of the back of the arm which is having three head lateral head, medial head and long head. So long head is coming from this infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. Now there are two more muscles which are attached here on the lateral border but on dorsal side. You are seeing this from the posteriorly and posterior side you are able to see two muscles. One is this teres minor. This is teres minor muscle and then you are having this one more is teres major muscle. So you have to understand that when you are reading the lateral border, you have to keep three things in mind. One is the long head of triceps which is arising from the infraglenoid tubercle. Then you will have teres minor muscle and teres major muscle. The minor is coming from upper and the major is below. So this is the one and important thing. The second important thing which you have to understand here that once you are reading the pattern of the origin, you will realize that these both uh, teres minor and major 
are not having the same insertion. The teres minor insert posteriorly and major is going anteriorly and between them you are having this long head of triceps. So, these are the two muscles, this is the teres minor, this is the major and the long head will go and merge between these two. So, this is the reason of the formation of spaces around the scapula that we will see in the coming videos. So, here you have to understand about the pattern of the origin of three muscles, teres minor arising from the upper part of the lateral border on dorsal surface, teres major arising from the lower part and the infraglenoid tubercle is giving origin to the long head of triceps. Now, this diagram is showing there is a one artery and this artery is known as circumflex scapular artery. Now, this circumflex scapular artery sometimes create or sometimes prevent the divide the origin of teres minor muscle. So, the origin of teres minor interrupted by the origin or the course of circumflex scapular artery. And circumflex scapular artery is making a loop around this lateral border of the scapula. So, this teres minor origin is interrupted by a artery on the lateral border is known as circumflex scapular artery. Now, what about the superior border? Superior border extends from the superior angle to the lateral angle. On the superior border, you are having a origin of inferior belly of omohyoid muscle. Now, what is omohyoid? Now, this is the hyoid bone. Now, hyoid bone is a midline bone which is present in the neck above the thyroid cartilage. Now, this hyoid bone is having a upper part of the muscle and here is the lower part of the muscle and both the part of the muscle are meeting in a center and that is known as central tendon of the omohyoid. Now, above the central tendon, this is known as superior belly of omohyoid and this is known as inferior belly of omohyoid. And this inferior belly of omohyoid arising from the superior border of the scapula near suprascapular notch. So, first you have to understand what is omohyoid. Omohyoid is a muscle and this muscle is having the two parts superior belly and inferior belly. Superior belly is going till the hyoid bone and inferior belly arising from the scapula and both the belly will join together by tendon. Clear? Now, there is a one more important question. The structure passing through the suprascapular notch. Now, you know that there is a notch present on the superior border and through that notch you are having the two structure. One is now which is known as suprascapular now and another is artery. Now, you have to understand that this suprascapular notch converted into a foramen by transverse scapular ligament. So, in a living person this notch is not present but rather than you are having a suprascapular foramen. So, now will pass below the ligament and artery is present above the ligament. Now, what about the lateral angle of the scapula? The lateral angle of the scapula is having the glenoid cavity or the fossa and it is a pear shaped fossa. And when you are doing the anatomical position of the scapula, you know that we cannot keep the scapula vertically straight in the posterior direction. The scapula is always follow the curvature of the ribs. So, the glenoid cavity is directed forward laterally and slightly upward so that it can follow the curvature of your ribs. Now, on the glenoid cavity, you are having a one more projection is known as supraglenoid tubercle. So, you have to keep this thing in mind that there is a tubercle in the upper part of the glenoid cavity, there is a tubercle near the lower part of the glenoid cavity. Now, this infraglenoid tubercle gives origin to the long head of triceps. Now, we are talking about this supraglenoid tubercle, that means the tubercle above the glenoid cavity. Now, this supraglenoid which is on the upper part of the glenoid cavity give rise to the origin to long head of biceps breaker. So, I told you that 
the infraglenoid will give to the origin to the long head of triceps and this will give origin to this long head of biceps brachii. Now after taking origin the long head is passing through this intertubercular or bicipital groove and later on it will join with the short head of biceps. Now there is a one more thing is known as glenoid labrum. Now what is the labrum? Labrum is nothing but it is a kind of fibrocartilaginous ring and this fibrocartilaginous ring attached on the border of the glenoid cavity and it is helpful to increase the concavity of the glenoid cavity to accommodate the head of humerus. So this glenoid labrum which is a fibrocartilaginous ring attached near the margins of glenoid cavity. Now outside this margin of the glenoid cavity you are having the capsule of shoulder joint. So shoulder joint attached near the margin of glenoid cavity and proximal to the glenoid labrum and it encloses the origin of long head of biceps brachii. What does it mean? That the long head of biceps brachii which will arise from here is enclosed by the capsule of shoulder joint. So this origin is become intracapsular. So this is again the question of your exam. Write down the tendons which are present inside the joint. So one of the example is long head of biceps which is intracapsular and second is the tendon of popliteus which is also intracapsular. So the it encloses the origin of the long head. So the origin of the long head is intracapsular in origin. Now sometimes there is a problem occurs in the glenoid labrum. Now this glenoid labrum is injury is appreciable in this image where you can see that this is the tear in the glenoid labrum. And once the glenoid labrum tear will occur, patient is having the shoulder pain. And this tear in the glenoid labrum is caused by repeated shoulder dislocation. So when this shoulder head dislocates repeatedly, it may lead to the tear in this glenoid labrum and it is highly painful condition. Now in this diagram, you can see that this is the long head of biceps cut part and this is coming from this supraglenoid tubercle which is present here. So you have to keep this thing in mind that the supra glenoid tubercle give rise to the origin which is intracapsular. Now here this is the attachment of the capsule. So now in this diagram you cannot see the origin of the long head. Why? Because now it is hidden by this green color capsule. It was visible in this diagram because we have not having the outer covering of capsule. But once you will put the capsule in its position, the origin of the this long head is not visible which is supposed to come from this point which is the supraglenoid tubercle. So the origin is intracapsular in nature. Now there are two terms, one is known as anatomical neck of the scapula, another is known as surgical neck of scapula. So what is the difference? Anatomical neck is just medial to glenoid cavity which give rise to attachment to your glenoid labrum and if you draw, it is draw by a line passing from the infraglenoid tuberosity or tubercle to the root of coracoid process. So in this diagram, this is our infraglenoid tubercle and if I will pass a line from lateral part of the root to this infraglenoid tubercle. And if I will complete this, I am making the circle and this is your anatomical neck. But if I want to draw the surgical neck of scapula, surgical neck means that here you are having an important relation of the nerve and that nerve is suprascapular nerve. So if you will draw a line from the lateral side of coracoid process to the infraglenoid tubercle, then if you will make a circle then this area is known as surgical neck of scapula. So the difference between the anatomical neck and surgical neck is that they are both are very near to each other. Both the necks are very adjacent to each other but this is the landmark 
that if you are drawing the line from anterior part of this uh, coracoid process on the lateral side or if you are drawing from the suprascapular notch. If I will draw the line from suprascapular notch and approaching downward then I am drawing the surgical neck. But if I am drawing from the base of your coracoid process from the lateral side till this infraglenoid then I am drawing the anatomical neck. Now, you have one more process is spinous process. Now, for understanding of the spinous process, you have to look scapula from superior side. So, this is the superior view of the scapula and this is the ventral surface, this is the dorsal surface because I told you that the spinous process is a feature of dorsal surface. So, on the dorsal side, this is a triangular plate. Now, this triangular plate attached on the posterior aspect of scapula. Now, this is the anterior border of this triangular plate and this anterior border of the spinous process of this triangular plate attached to the dorsal side. This floor of the spinous process is contributing in the supraspinous fossa and the inferior surface of the plate contributing in the infraspinous fossa. Now, this is the base of your triangular plate. Now, this base is forming the spinoglenoid notch. This is spinoglenoid notch. This posterior border is known as crest of the spinous process and this apex is attached here where you are having the root of the spinous process. So, it is a triangular projection on the dorsal surface which divides it into the two part. Then what are the different part? Apex. Apex is going towards the medial side and it merge with the medial border at the level of T3 while when you will have the base it is going to form your spinoglenoid notch, the anterior border attached on the dorsal side of the scapula and posterior border is known as crest of the spine. Now this spinous process is visible from the posterior side. Now this is the inferior surface of the spinous process which is contributing in the infraspinous fossa and this is the supraspinous fossa. Now, here is the spinoglenoid notch. Now, this is actually the flat triangular area which is covered by the trapezius and it is known as root of the spine. Now, this portion is known as crest of the spine and the junction of the acromion process and this crest of the spine is known as acromial angle. It is known as acromial angle that I will show you in the coming slide. Now, when you will cut this crest, you will realize that this crest is having two border, upper border and lower border or you can say upper lip and lower lip. So, this is your upper lip of the crest. This is the upper lip of the crest or upper border of the crest and this is the lower lip or the lower border of the crest. Now, this part or the posterior surface of the crest continue with the superior surface of acromion process and you can feel this superior surface of acromion process and the posterior part or the crest of the spine which is subcutaneous. Now, in these two diagrams, you have to appreciate the arrangement. Now, see this blue color arrow is showing the acromial angle. Now, above the anterior to the acromial angle, you will have the superior surface of acromion process and behind that you are having this crest which is visible. Now, this crest is having superior border and inferior border. Superior border is having the attachment for the trapezius while lower border is giving origin to the posterior fibers of deltoid muscle. Now, if I will cut this crest and see, now see, you can see this is the cut part of your crest. Now, once you will cut, you will realize that this posterior part of the crest is subcutaneous and this upper lip is giving origin to the trapezius while the lower part is giving origin to the deltoid muscle. Now, what about the acromion process? Acromion process is having superior surface and inferior surface. Now, inferior surface is known as subacromial area. Sub means below the acromion process. 
so there will be a subacromial area which is facing towards the shoulder joint this is the superior surface of the acromion process this is the outer lip of the acromion process this is the inner lip of the acromion process and outer lip will continue with the inferior border of the spinous process at the acromial angle now in this diagram you can see that this outer border is giving origin to the deltoid and here again you are having the multi pinnate attachment so this is the part where you are having the 3 to 4 septas and these septas are giving intramuscular arrangement of the multi pinnate part of deltoid while this inner border is giving origin to the trapezius now what is acromial angle it is a junction between the lateral border of the acromion and the lower lip of the crest of the spine and it is subcutaneous in nature you can palpate the acromial angle so this is the acromial angle which is palpable and it is an important landmark between the acromion process and spinous process of scapula now what is subacromial bursa now you come to uh, you come across this term some sub, subacromial bursa now sub means below below the acromion process you are having the bursa and this bursa is again preventing the friction between the superior part of the shoulder joint and under surface of the acromion process so here you can see this green color area and this green color area which is nothing but it is a placement of sub acromial bursa so this bursa is very important for your exam purpose you have this question what structure lies below the acromion process or below the or in the sub acromial area answer is sub acromial bursa now we'll talk about the coracoid process the coracoid process give rise to the short head of biceps coracobrachialis and receives insertion of pectoralis minor muscle now here you can see that this is a projection anteriorly now its tip is giving origin to a short muscle on the arm and this muscle is insert on the medial side of the humerus and this is your coracobrachialis muscle now along with the coracobrachialis you are having the origin of short head of the biceps and this short head of the biceps later on join this long head and they will form the biceps muscle so there are two muscle from the tip of the coracoid process coracobrachialis and short head of biceps while on its anteromedial surface you are having the insertion of pectoralis minor muscle now apart from that there is a one very important ligament attached from the coracoid process to the under surface of clavicle and that ligament is known as coraco clavicular ligament what is the name is coraco clavicular ligament now this coraco clavicular ligament is having two part one is coming from the conoid tubercle of the clavicle and this part is known as conoid part and second part is coming from the ridge of the clavicle connecting this coracoid process and this is known as trapezoid part of coraco clavicular ligament so whenever you are reading the coracoid process you have to keep in mind the tip will give attachment to the coracobrachialis and short head the remaining part will give in receive insertion of pectoralis minor while there is attachment of the ligament with with the under surface of the clavicle and that is known as coraco clavicular ligament for that clavicle is having two projections conoid tubercle and trapezoid ridge now there is one more question about the coracoid process coracoid process considered as a atavistic epiphysis atavistic epiphysis means the epiphysis which is phylogenetically independent bone what does it mean that earlier this tip of the coracoid process is not the part of scapula while it is a independent bone but later on it merge or come with the scapula in the reptiles it is a separate bone still but in the human it is now become the part of scapula so the coracoid process 
is a classical example of atavistic epiphysis. The atavistic epiphysis means the epiphysis which was earlier a separate bone but now become the part of scapula. Now here in this video you will see the different part. So this is your acromion process. This is your acromial angle. This acromial angle will continue with the inferior border of the spinous process. This is the coracoid process. Coracoid process is a projection on the ventral side of this neck of the scapula. This is your anatomical neck of the scapula and this anatomical neck give attachment to the glenoid labrum. Behind this you are having the surgical neck of the scapula. This surgical neck is passing through the suprascapular notch and that is why it is known as surgical neck because you are having the suprascapular now. Now this is your shoulder blade where you are having the costal surface. On the costal surface you are having the ridges for the attachment of subscapularis muscle. Then you are having the dorsal surface where you have the spinous process of scapula. Now in this video you can see that this green color area is showing the acromial angle which is a junction of the outer border of the acromion process and the inferior border of the spinous process. Then you are having a facet for the attachment of the clavicle on the inner side of the acromion process and this facet is going to form acromioclavicular joint. So this bone is going to make a joint with the two bones with the humerus and with the clavicle. So humerus is going to articulate here. Now this is the spinoglenoid notch. This spinoglenoid notch is between the spinous process and the glenoid cavity. Through this the suprascapular and infrascapular fossa communicate. This is your infraglenoid tubercle. Now this infraglenoid tubercle is a feature of the upper part of lateral border which we will give rise to the origin of long head of triceps. This is the supraglenoid tubercle. From the supraglenoid tubercle you are having the origin of long head of the biceps and that origin is intracapsular and this is your suprascapular fossa that will give origin to the supraspinatus and below that you have infra spinous fossa that will give you the infraspinous muscle. Now this is the spinous process and this is uh, spinous process is continue with the acromion process. So this is all about the scapula where you are now having the orientation about the different processes and the borders. So this is my sincere request that whenever you are reading the scapula please go through my part one of the this scapula video also. So this is all for this class. Thank you.